Today, I'm gonna to show you how to migrate your website very easily and for free. I'm also gonna show you two other options of how to do it using the same tools, just in case you get stuck on the first one. The only reason you could get stuck on the first one is if you're using shared hosting. On shared hosting, you do run the risk of exceeding your server resources. So that's why I'm gonna be showing you two other options just in case that happens. You don't have to stress, all of them are very easy and they all require very minimal technical knowledge. There's no real fancy tricks to this, but it will mitigate all issues that you'll run into when migrating a WordPress website. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, now step one, before we actually start doing the migration, we have to set up the database on our new hosting for our website. Now I know it sounds a bit technical, but it actually is very easy and I'll show you how to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the cPanel of our new hosting, not the old one, the new one, and we're going to create the database there for our migration. Now that's the only real technical thing that you're going to need to do for this website. So let me show you how to do that right now. Okay, so once you've logged into your server, you'll be presented with this screen here, and this is your cPanel backend. Now, if you don't know how to log into here, whatever the domain is for your new website, all you have to do is slash cPanel. Once you go through that URL and you log into your server, you'll come to this screen. Now here in the cPanel screen, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go look into the database section and we're gonna click on MySQL databases. Here we're gonna create the database for our website. On this new MySQL database screen, we're gonna give our database a name. So here in create new database, I'm gonna give the new name for the website database that we're going to be using. I'm just gonna call my new website and I'm gonna say create database. Now do remember not to put any spaces in there. Once it's created, we just click on this go back and we scroll down to say add user to database. If you don't have a user there already, all you have to do is create the user first and then we come back to the screen of, of adding the user to the database. Now again, this is the only technical thing that you have to do for this whole migration. So in the section of add user to database, we select the user we're gonna be using and the database that we're gonna be linking them to and then we say add. In this new screen, we're gonna click on all privileges and say make changes. Now again, this is the only technical part of this. After this, it's all smooth sailing. So now we've done all this, we're gonna head into the WordPress backend of the site that we're going to move. So here in the backend of our WordPress website that we're going to move, we're going to add the plugin called Duplicator. In order to do that, we go into plugins and we're gonna say add new. Here in the add new screen, we're gonna go and click on the top right and we're gonna say Duplicator. And in the search results, we're going to click on this Duplicator plugin right over here. We're just gonna say install now. If you're not sure which one it is, just make sure it's the one by the company called Duplicator. Now that Duplicator has been installed and activated, we are going to go and make the package. Normally with Duplicator, you'll be presented with a wizard to guide you through the whole process. On some instances, you won't. Now I'm gonna quickly show you the version where the wizard didn't pop up. Either way, will get you to the same place. So now on the left-hand side menu, you're gonna scroll down to see Duplicator and we're gonna click on Packages. Here in the screen, on the right-hand side, we are going to click Create New. On this new screen, you can see it says a name and then at the bottom right, you can see it just says Next. Now you can choose whatever name you'd want. I just leave the normal auto-generated one and I'm gonna click Next. The duplicator is gonna scan your website and it's gonna see exactly what it needs to copy in terms of files and in database. Now that it's come up with everything it needs to know that it has to copy, at the bottom, you have to click on Yes, Continue with the build process and then say Build. And there we go. Duplicator is now building the install packages that we'll be using on our new hosting. Okay, so if you're on shared hosting and you run into this screen here, then please stick with this chapter. If you didn't get the screen and you have the one that's showing you all the files to download, just skip this chapter and then continue with the rest of the video. Now for the rest of you that did get stuck with the screen, I'm going to show you a different way of doing this exact same process. So in the duplicator, we go down into settings. In the settings screens, we're going to go and click on packages. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the compression method the duplicator was using. So here in archive, we're going to change the archive engine from zip archive to dupe archive. And we're going to scroll down to the bottom and we're going to say save package settings. Once that's done, we go back into packages. We can delete the one that we were trying to make. So now we can recreate that package using a different compression method that shouldn't exhaust the server resources that you have. So now we're just going to click on create new. We're going to follow the same process. We're just going to click on next. And then we can click on yes, continue again. We're going to say build. Now this process will take a little bit longer than the older one because it doesn't want to push your server too much. It's going to try its best not to. 
Okay, so now that Duplicator has completed building up the packages, either from the first option that I showed you or the second option, they both come to the screen. Now we're going to download the two files that we need to move our website onto the new hosting. Now the first file is the installer.php file and the second one is the archive that we created in the build process. So now you have the option you can download each one of these separately or you can just download both. I'm just going to click on download both files and we're going to download these things onto our desktop. Now that the files have been downloaded on our desktop, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into the cPanel of our new hosting. And we're going to copy these two files into the public directory that's in that hosting. So here in cPanel, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the file manager and we're going to look for public HTML if we are not there in our default. Uh, and we're going to look for the public HTML if we are not in our default website folder. In the public HTML folder, we're going to now copy those two files into this directory. In order to do that, at the top here, we're going to say upload. We can either click on select file and then it'll open up the dialog and we just navigate to where we downloaded the files. Or you can just drag both files onto the screen here and they'll automatically download for you. So here's the two files that I have downloaded. I'm going to select both of them. I'm going to drag them onto this window here and I'm just going to let go. And as you can see that the files are being uploaded onto the server. Now that these two files have been uploaded, we're going to install the new website. So in order to install the website, we're going to open up a new window. And here we're going to type in the new domain that we moved the website to. So if the new domain is examplewebsite.com, we're going to type in the URL of examplewebsite.com. But before we press enter, we are going to press forward slash installer.php. Now that installer.php is one of the two files that we actually had downloaded and we put onto our server. So let's do that now. So once you have filled out the new domain name forward slash installer.php, you'll be presented with this new screen here. Now do remember that this is on your new hosting. Here the only thing that we have to worry about is the database name. Now remember that database I showed you in that first chapter. We're going to take that name and that login details of that database and we're going to put it into the setup screen. Here in the middle, you can see the setup section and here you can see the database connection. Now this empty database, we're going to make sure it's an empty database. We're going to say it's local host and the database is going to be that new database that we created in cPanel. So mine was that new website. Now just make sure that you copy the complete name of that database and then just fill in the username and password that you created in that screen as well. Once you fill in your username and password, all you're going to do is click validate and you should see this following screen. Here, all we have to worry about is I have read and accepted all terms and notices because everything in validation has passed. And we click next and it just double verifies and we click OK. And now it'll extract all the files that it had in its own archive and it'll put everything into place and it'll put the new domain name in place of the old one in all the places that it needs to in the database entries. I have noticed on other migration software that it doesn't do it completely and then you do have to sit and dig through all the pages to make sure that everything actually copied properly. This is the very reason why I like Duplicator. It's slightly more technical than other plugins but it's very thorough when moving the databases across to put in the new domain name in place of the old one. Okay, so now that everything's been extracted and finalized, the last thing you have to do is log in to our website on the new domain. And in order to do that, we just click admin login. So once you've logged in, Duplicator then removes all the installation files it used to set up the website in the new location. And that's it, your website's been moved into the new location. The only thing left to do really is just to deactivate the Duplicator plugin. You don't need it anymore anyway. So what you do is you just go into plugins and you go into your installed plugins. Over here, all you have to do is deactivate it once it's deactivated, then you can just remove it. And to remove it, all you do is click delete, say OK, and that's it. Your website is now fully functional on the new hosting. Now, for whatever reason, you still can create the archive on your old hosting. I'm going to show you the last option that you have that's slightly more technical, not really. But there's no ways that it can fail. I've done it a couple of times and it's never failed me yet. So here in Duplicator in the Packages screen, if for whatever reason you still couldn't create the installer and the archive, what we're going to do is we're going to do a slight modification in the build process. So what we're going to do is now we're going to go and create new. And on this new screen, before we click next, what we're going to do is we're going to go into archive and we're going to say archive only the database. 
and then we click next. So what's going to happen now is it's going to archive the entire database, but not the files of your WordPress website. I'm going to show you how to do that as well now. So here we're going to say build. So now it's going to package the installer and an archive of the database. Okay, so now that it's made that, we're going to download these two files. And once you've downloaded those two files, the next step we do is we're going to log into the cPanel of our old hosting and we're going to And we're going to quickly copy as is all the files and folder structures of our old website to move onto the new hosting. Sounds slightly complicated, it actually really isn't. So here in the cPanel of our old hosting, we're going to go into File Manager, we're going to go into the public HTML folder, and here is all the files of our website that we are going to migrate over onto a new hosting. So what you're going to do is just going to say select all on top, right click, and then just say compress. We're going to set a zip archive and we're just going to give this quickly a name website move and i'm going to say compress file so now that it's made the zip file what we're going to do is we're just going to say reload just to update this window and that zip file called website move that we just created we're going to right click on that and we're just going to say download and we're going to download our website files as well so this way it's just one extra file that we have to upload onto the server Okay, so now we've downloaded the zip file of our website from the old server. The final steps is just to put it in place in the new server. So let's go and do that now. So in cPanel of our new server, we're going to go into File Manager and we're going to go into the public HTML. So here in the public HTML, this is where we're going to upload that zip file that we had downloaded. So in order to do that, on the top here, you can see Upload. We click on that and we can just drag and drop or open up the window to select that zip file that we had created from our old server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the file and it's going to upload that whole zip file into our new server. Okay, once the file has been uploaded onto our new server and you don't see it in place where it should be, all you have to do is click on that reload button over here and you can just refresh this page and you should see that zip file here. Once you see the zip file, all you have to do is right click on it and say extract. This is going to be the folder obviously where we're going to extract to. Then we just say extract files and it'll take care of everything else. Now again, we've just extracted and you don't see the files. So here we just say reload and you'll see the files in. It's not like Windows where everything is just auto refreshed. So just have to make sure with the back end of cPanel. So now we've successfully moved our website files from the old server to the new one. The only thing left to do is to go into the other chapter where I show you how to download the install.php file and the archive file from Duplicator and that you'd upload here in this exact same folder as well and then carry on with that chapter. That part of this tutorial is going to be exactly the same as everyone else. And that is how to migrate your WordPress website for free. It's slightly technical because you had to go and create the new database, but outside of that it's pretty foolproof. There's no ways that anything's going to be wrong with your WordPress website once you've installed it in a new location. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, please send a comment down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.